Hello, welcome to Pass the Interview. Today we are doing question 1.1 of Cracking the Coding Interview 6th edition. Right here I have the question written down. It reads as follows. Uh, implement an algorithm to determine if a string has all unique characters. And then as a secondary question, what if you cannot use additional data structures? So before we get into it, I have a little bare bones code written out here. I'm basically just saving the input uh, because we're going to be using the command line to test this here. Save the input of arg0, and then I'm passing that into this helper function that I've already uh, prototyped up here. And we're basically just going to print the return value of this using input as an argument. And we're going to return true if this string is unique and false if it's not. So basically, before we get into it, I'm going to talk about the algorithm a little bit here. Basically, the most simple way to go about this, because it's a pretty straightforward question, is to read through the string one character time. And using a data structure, we're going to initialize just an array of Boolean values. We're going to check and see if we've encountered this character before, return false. Otherwise, set it to true and continue looping. And if we can get through the entire loop without encountering a scenario, encountering a, scenar a scenario where a character set at a specific character equals true, then we're just going to return true. Because if we can get the, through the entire string and not find a copy of any character, we know that it was a unique string. So that's a lot to take in. So let's just kind of get into the question here. Right now, I'm just going to start by initializing a character set of Boolean values. So we're going to say Boolean character set array equals new Boolean. And this is the first, not tricky, but important part of this question, is how big to make this character set. Because it really depends on uh, what your interviewer is looking for. Because uh, there's a lot of different kinds of encoding. There's, there's UTC encoding, there's ASCII, there's so many different varieties of how big the actual character sets we can store are. For the sake of this question, I'm going to do regular ASCII, full extension for 256 because uh, it seems to be a pretty standard and it's a nice number to work with that employers can recognize you you know you're talking about if you actually just set a boundary for it of course if you're only going to be using uh, the alphabet you can just make it 26 characters for A through Z but for this question we're using 256 but keep that in mind because it does affect how we solve this problem and I'm also going to initialize a little variable here for the character now let's get into the loop. This is the loop we're going to be using to check every single character of the string. So I'm just going to say int i equals zero. And then we'll i is less than string dot length because we are going to only run this while we are going through this characters of the string, input string that is. And this is where we're going to be the, doing the actual checking. We're going to say my character equals str dot char at i. Now basically all we're doing with this is checking the character at index i of the input string and storing it in this my character that we initialized up here. Because the first thing we want to do in each iteration of the loop is pull out a character from the string in order. And what are we going to do? We're going to check our character set at that character that we just pulled out to see if it's true. If it's true, we're going to return false because if we've encountered a spot that is true to this null initialized, not null initialized, false initialized Boolean character set, we know that we've hit a copy. So we're just going to return false. Else, it equals false, which means we haven't encountered that character yet, in which case we want to set it to true. Because once we hit that character, we've encountered it once. So we want to let this, uh, this character set know that, hey, we found this character before, if we go through a second loop and find that it equals true again, we're going to return false because we found two of the same characters. And that's the loop. That's all it really is. And uh, the last thing we need to put here is return true at the end because if we can get through this entire uh, string and not find a character uh, where it equals true in our character set, we've completed the question. So right now, let's do a little testing here. We're going to Java compile. 1.1 and run it with a string. True. It's because string is made of complete unique characters. Uh, there's no copies. But what happens if we do it with two eyes? We get false because what happens is it hits this STRI, uh, sets the character set equal to true for that character we pulled out. But once it hits this second eye, 
it's going to see, hey, character set of my character is already set to true because of we just went through and set it to true. So we're just going to return false right away. Hence, we get printed false. So, yeah, pretty straightforward question. Uh, nice little question that also tests your ability to know how big to make your data structures when you're pursuing certain kinds of problems. So I think that's the trickiest part of this question. Now, you have two options of what you can do if you cannot use additional data structures, one of which is to compare every character of the string to every other character of the string. And uh, this takes an unnecessary amount of time, but it is another way to do it. Uh, the other way would be to actually sort the input string itself and then uh, just check if neighboring characters are identical, which is also a little more work, but uh, when an interviewer would be asking you if you could do it without a data structure, they probably would not be asking you to implement it just to know what the solution is. So thanks for watching.